everybody, welcome back to my shop and today I'm going to review this electric Makita chainsaw. I'll start by reviewing its overall layout and features and then we'll do some test cuts to see how it performs. But please remember, this is not an instructional video and is meant for entertainment purposes only. Your safety is your responsibility. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the saw. As you see, we've got model UC4051A with a 16 inch bar and a 14 and a half amp motor. Now they probably avoided a 15 amp motor just to help avoid throwing the breaker too often because nobody likes having to run inside every time you throw the breaker. Uh, as you can see, the body has a really nice sleek design, which is important so that you don't always get the body of the saw caught up in whatever you're working in, like brush or whatever. The motor itself is cooled by a fan cooling system. The exit air is up here and the intake air is back here, which I really like because most of the dust from cutting is up here and below. And back here you get probably the least amount of dust. The brushes are easily changeable, as you can see on either side. So to me, that kind of shows Makita really is trying to build a saw that lasts. Uh, something else that proves that to me is that the motor actually has a, I think it's either a thermal shutdown system or it's a overload system, or maybe both, something like that. But if you start the saw already into wood, and it's got to try to bog itself to get up, it just won't go, so that you don't overheat it. And also, if you're bogging it down too much, it'll stop, because it's basically meant to safeguard against somebody abusing it and overheating it and burning it out prematurely. So that's kind of nice. The chain break is, is really well done as well. As you can see, it's got very positive locking positions so that you know when it's engaged and when you've disengaged it. Um, the other thing about it is that when you do have the chain brake on, the motor will not even start. So that's uh, probably both a safety feature and again, helps safeguard against the user having the chain brake accidentally on and trying to get the saw to go while that motor is just bogging down and overheating. While we're on this side, you can also see that this is the oil fill cap and uh, you know it's an electric saw so you don't have mixed fuel but the bar still needs lubrication so you've got to put bar oil in this saw just like any chainsaw the only thing i don't like though is that it's right under the chain brake you know a lot of other saws they put it well out of the way everything and you can just tip the saw on its side and fill it up well this one's set at an odd angle the chain brake is in the way of it and so you always feel like you have to kind of do it with two hands because if you try to just put the saw on its side, it rolls right over and it's almost, you know, it's not, you can't fill the tank because the tank is almost higher than the nozzle now. So that's one design flaw I find with this saw. Now you can see on the side here, we've got a trigger safety lock mechanism and they've designed that nicely too because basically that's where your thumb rests anyway. So it's not really inconvenient at all. And when you actually hold the saw, the balance of the saw is actually really nice. It's very similar to what a steel or a husky would feel like in your hands. And so maybe that's just coincidence. Maybe they actually designed it that way. But either way, the result is it's, it's pleasant to hold on to. The power cord that comes on the saw is really high quality as you would expect from Makita. It's got a really nice rubber to it and it's got this good boot here which is important because that's a really big wear point for a a thing like a chainsaw where as you're using it, you're constantly flicking it up and down and up and down. So that's well thought of. And it's got this little protector boot on the end for, uh, you know, just to keep all the sawdust and whatever out. The handles themselves are covered in a nice grippy rubber. Like when you grab it, you feel like you have a really positive grip on it. It seems like it's a really strong material, so I, I would guess that it would last pretty long. The bar itself is a Makita made bar. I don't really have any complaints about it and it's the style bar that has a little needle oiling area up here. Here I'll go get my grease gun and we'll throw a, a shot in it. You see it would use one of these needle greasers or I'm not even sure what the heck they're really called. But it just kind of goes up to the bar and you give her a couple blasts and it fills it up with grease. So that'll help prolong the life of the bar because the nose does take a lot of strain from t chain tension and a lot of rotations. The tightening system, okay, this is an area where I'm not super happy, but I'm not super let down. And let's get into that. So 
The tightening system, I'm used to steel chainsaws, which you have two bar nuts, which you loosen, and then you take a chainsaw tool to tighten it using a screw that's either, you know, up on the side of the chain case, or whatever you call it, chain guard, or it's placed up in this area here. And on this system, it actually uses, instead of bar nuts, it's got this hand tightening kind of system, which at first I didn't really like because it really feels like you can't get a good grip on the bar. But again, it's an electric chainsaw. It's not running a 60cc motor, so it doesn't really need to be strapped down as if it's got this big vibrating two-stroke. So it's not a bad design. Um, it's quick, it's easy, and you don't need your tool on you. So there's some positives to it, right? You're not searching for your tool. So there's that. To actually tighten the chain, just use this little wheel down here. Um, so I'm gonna show you how that works. So let's loosen it off first. So you see you just spin it. Now the chain's loose. By the way, when you're tightening a chain in a chainsaw, for all you people who don't know a lot about chainsaws, always pull the bar up when you're tightening it. Otherwise you might get finished tightening and say, oh yeah, look, it's nice and tight. And then you go and cut and that bar slides up and now it's not so tight. So always pull up on the bar when you're tightening the chainsaw. But back to the, to the review here. So we're gonna just pull up on the bar. We're gonna spin that wheel. And at first I was kind of like, ugh. You know, it doesn't feel as positive. It feels like it's all flimsy plastic, which it might be. But in the end, you're not putting a lot of exertion on it to get the right tension you want. And it's not, again, a massive chainsaw that you need to have you know, massive tension on the chain because the bar is two feet long. It's a 16 inch bar. You don't need a heck of a lot of chain tension on a small bar. So now that we've got this tightened down, you just tighten up the bar again. And again, instead of bar nuts, you've got this tightening mechanism, which you can kind of leverage on this handle. And then you slide the handle up and it locks into, into place. Here's one feature I don't like though. Sometimes you lock it in, it doesn't quite hit the grooves. And so you're, you're gonna try to wrestle it to get it tighter. And there, I got a little tighter and now it locks. So maybe that's one, again, there's one downside to this system that you might have to fiddle with it. So again, no chainsaw tools, but kind of finicky parts in a sense. But as you see, the chain's perfectly tensioned. Let's now dive into this thing. So we're gonna loosen the bar and just take this right off. I'm even gonna loosen this a bit so when we put it on, we have a bit of slack. So it just spins right off and off pops the cover. Now, what differs about this saw versus a steel or a husky is that on a steel or a husky, the chain tensioning system is built into the saw. So it's into some sort of cast metal, like aluminum or whatever they use, okay? So it's, it's probably a lot stronger that way. On this system, it's actually just a little plastic pin down here. Let's get a close up of it. So you hear, here is the pin that actually tensions it. As you screw this, let's see if we can get this on camera. As you dial it here, that feeds up into a system that turns this screw. So there's all these little tiny parts that could all go wrong. And you got a little plastic pin that actually does the tensioning. It doesn't have to go under a lot of tension. So as long as you're, you know, attentioning your chain right, you don't have to reef it down. So it's might, it might not be taking that much tension. And then once you clamp it onto the bar, that's what's holding it in place. Not just that pin, but still a plastic pin. It just doesn't feel as good. I, I, I just don't trust that as much. Um, on maybe the plus side though, if the mechanism was in the body of the saw and something goes wrong, now you've actually got to service the body. Whereas say if you use this a long time and you abuse it or you drop it or you break it, you would only have to order this one part from Makita. I'm sure they have the part available. Maybe you'd even only have to switch out the small part that's in here. Who knows? So on the one side, you won't have to send in the body of the saw, but on the downside, it's bound to be a much weaker system than what you see on steels and huskies. Eh. One other thing is having just one stud to hold on the, the bar, the case in the bar, 
it also seems a little bit, you know, under-engineered to a certain degree. It doesn't seem like it, it holds the bar as tight and as stable as if it had two studs. The oil just comes out of this section here and feeds into either this hole or this hole, depending on which way you have the bar on. Uh, it's pretty nice and clean inside. Again, pretty easy to clean, pretty easy to service. No real complaints there. Now, sometimes putting the bar back on could be a problem, not with installing the bar itself. Just go chain on the sprocket first and then over that stud. But putting the case back on can be an issue if you've ever fiddled with the tensioning system too much while it's off the saw, or if, say, your last chain was worn out and it had stretched over time and now you're putting a brand new chain on, it's going to be so far out of, um, what would you say, calibration compared to the old chain that the pin is not going to line up nicely with this bottom hole to tension the bar and you'll have a hard time getting the bar back on. For instance, right now, I have it out of whack a little bit, so I put it on there and it should just go on, but that pin's hitting the side of the bar because it's not lined up with the hole. And there's no way for you to look inside and be able to see how far it's out. So you end up having to fiddle with it like this and see if you find it that way. There, see I got lucky and I, I got it to the right place. But again, that wouldn't happen if the tensioning system was on the body of the saw because you could visually see where the tensioning pin is going. So one more thing to keep in mind. It comes with a good quality Oregon chain. I believe it's a, a semi-chisel tooth chain because it doesn't have a perfect 90 on the cutter tooth. Uh, it takes a 5 seconds inch file and this is one of those um, safety chains or anti-kickback chains. I'll show you a different angle to show you what I mean. Now if you look at this raker or depth gauge which sets the depth of the, the cut, if you file these down that tooth's just going to grab the wood and stop the chain. This keeps it from grabbing too much wood at once. Um, but as it's rolling down the bar, it's acting as a normal raker tooth. But if you see, as it comes along to the nose, remember it's this tooth here, as it comes along to the nose, you'll see that it opens up and it helps to fill the gap up further ahead of this tooth so that the tooth can't take that big of a cut. Because if you contact the upper top nose portion, if you contact the the front of the bar, especially this upper part here, what has the tendency to happen is this tooth and all the teeth behind it will grab that wood and throw the bar upwards and that's where you get kickback. And so you never want to cut with this tip of the bar. You'll see professionals do plunge cuts and bore cuts in certain ways and you'll see that tips contacting the wood but they're doing it in a certain fashion. So never let this contact the, the wood otherwise you're, you're asking for a disaster. Now, a couple more features the saw has. It's got a soft start feature, so when you hit the trigger, it doesn't just blast its way straight up to full RPM. It ramps up slowly over a second, or two seconds or something, so that the saw doesn't really torque over in your hand, and it also has less chance of throwing a breaker that way as well. Uh, it also has a braking feature, so as soon as you let go of the trigger, it brings the whole speed of the saw down to zero in less than a second. So that's another both safety feature and it might help with your efficiency because you're not waiting for the saw to slowly stop turning. So let me demonstrate that. So notice the slow ramp up of the soft start and the quick braking of the release of the trigger. Nice design. Now there's one more unfortunate criticism I have of this saw and that it's it leaks bar oil over time and I'm pretty sure it's that every time you use it a little bit of oil is still up in the oil pump and at the top of the bar and that just slowly leaks out the bottom of the saw and as you can see over uh, I don't know year and a half or so it's completely soaked this cardboard and the surface underneath that as well Carrying it wasn't really the hard part, it was getting it to the shoulder and getting it through the obstacle course and set this up and cut something. So here we got a chunk of birch. It's a pretty good size and it's really frozen, so it should be a good test for the saw. And the first couple cuts I'm going to do are going to be in some pretty twisted and knotty areas, so it'll really push the saw. Let's see how she does. 
Wear your safety protection when using your chainsaw. Shabby. That's pretty impressive for an electric chain See if this chain will permit a bore cut. Now what matters quite a bit to us wood turners is how well the saw can rip with the grain and deal with those big spaghetti like noodles that come shooting out the back here. So. Let's try that out and see how it does. Now all saws tend to plug up a little bit in the bottom here, but this has actually got a pretty big opening, so it's not too bad. Notice I put the chain brake on before I touch those that part of the saw. So Too shabby. Clear it out. That is a pretty darn good electric saw. May as well round these guys over while we're at it, eh? a nice little birch blank birch bowl blank thanks for tuning into this week's video if you like the video please click the like button and share it with whoever might need it if you have any questions or suggestions for me please fire those off in the comment section down below and if you haven't subscribed yet please do I'll have a new video out every Friday so thank you very much have yourself a great day and God bless